Hey there folks, today I'm going to talk about my top five kokanee trolling lures. Uh, it depends on what I'm running, if I'm running uh, traditional dodgers or if I'm running lake trolls or what a lot of people refer to as Ford Fender. So I'll make sure I emphasize which one I'm talking about when I'm running these lures. So my number one choice is going to be uh, Hoochies. I really like Hoochies because they're so lightweight and they come in such a wide variety of colors as you can see here. There's just so many different colors out on the market. And like I said, they're very lightweight and brightly colored. So when I run these behind Dodgers, which is how I prefer to run them, usually six to 12 inches, they can be thrown side to side very readily by the action of the Dodger. Uh, traditionally, I'm gonna run these with a two hook rig. You can add a few beads in there if you want to, um, but it's not necessary. And there's a bunch of different hoochies out there on the market. Now, if you go to a lot of your local tackle shops, you'll find these larger, wider diameter hoochies, a little bit bigger than what I showed you there. These ones work fine if you trim them down a little bit, but they do offer a little bit more increased drag, a little bit more mass. And so to me, they're not ideal for kokanee fishing because I like to have that lure moving side to side. So I really do prefer these smaller micro hoochies like these from Paulina Peak. Um, Deadly Venom Tackle also makes a number of them as well. Now, those things are really hard to find in stores, but you can find these small little crappie tube jigs. These things work great. Uh, they come in an endless variety of colors. Uh, they're widely available and very inexpensive, and they work just as good. Uh, so if you can't find these fancy micro hoochies, um, you can also just use crappie tube jigs. So let's move on to the next one. Okay, number two on my list is going to be small spinners. Now there's a wide variety of these out on the market. Uh, wedding rings are extremely popular for kokanee. Um, and one of the things that I've always shied away from initially why they're not my number one is that a lot of the spinners out on the market to me have an oversized blade and it often creates a lot more drag. So uh, before I would normally run those behind primarily things like these lake trolls here. This is the Cousin Carl's from Pulse and Cascade Tackle. You know, running a spinner behind this um, will produce fish for me, but I tend to catch more trout on it than kokanee, which is why I prefer to run these behind dodgers because they really don't have much side to side action. They do have some vibration, but the problem with running a spinning blade behind a dodger is it does create a little bit of drag. Uh, but what's nice is these newer spinners coming out on the market. This is the Aeroflash uh, micro spinner from Pulse and Cascade. It's an absolutely tiny little blade, but it's got a lot of color and flash packed on there. And because of that, it's got that lower drag, but still puts out a lot of a signal. And I like running these behind the Dodgers. They do extremely well. They come in a wide variety of colors. You can also find a bunch of other manufacturers producing their own version of small spinners. And there are times when spinners will outshine hoochies for sure. Okay, number three on the list is the Brad's Cut Plugs. Now, originally I used to use the mini cut plugs for kokanee and I did fairly well on these, especially later in the season as water temps came up and those fish got a little more aggressive. The, these really did produce even those large lures like that. But recently they've come out with their own kokanee cut plug series that's available in a bunch of really popular kokanee colors, your bright pinks, oranges, reds, um, and even chartreuse. So it's a little bit downsized. You can still open it up and stuff it with tuna, which is nice because you basically have a little scent chamber right there. And then um, using beads, I'll space off a couple hooks off the back of that. Now I tend to run these a little bit longer leaders. Um, I will run them behind Dodgers, but I think they really do shine behind Lake Trolls, uh, Ford Fenders and things like that. So definitely put that in your kokanee tackle box. These kokanee pl cut plugs um, can be very, very effective. And they, I also tend to catch a little bit larger kokanee on these as well, just because of that little bit larger profile lure. Okay, my number four lure is actually quite a contrast to my number three lure, which was the uh, cut plugs from Brad's. This is a homemade lure that has a very low profile, very simple uh, lure that oftentimes when they're just not willing to commit to the bite that day, sometimes downsizing something a little more subtle can actually produce more fish. And what this involves is a couple number four hooks with a little bit of crystal flash tied onto that front hook. So it adds just a little bit of flash. Otherwise, you just have the color of the hooks and the bait there behind your Dodger. I exclusively run these behind Dodgers because they don't have 
much action. So I'm gonna keep that leader short six to eight inches. And this one you can see is tied on these really beautiful, bright pink hooks from Maruto. This is their sickle shaped hooks. These things are probably the sharpest hooks on the market. Uh, I've never found hooks out there sharper than Maruto's. They, I mean, even Gamakatsu, which I think is ridiculously sharp, these are sharper than that. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to tie up this very simple lure real quick. So you need to grab a couple hooks, uh, size four, these are those Maruto pink hooks. Get a couple out real quick. Okay, put them back so the chickens don't eat them. Get some 10 pound monofilament, doesn't matter uh, what brand. Most of them are pretty decent at 10 pound. You can even go up a little bit higher, 12, 15 if you want. Kokanee aren't that line shy. I'm gonna snell in the bottom hook very quickly. I'll do seven wraps on the bottom and come back up and through. And I can trim off that excess there off that tail of that hook. Now, what I need to do is get some crystal flash right here. This is this, it comes in all kinds of colors, pink, red, blue, chartreuse, um, and all of them have a UV flash. So I make sure that you get the ones with the UV flash because those are the ones that work best. And you want to get uh, around 10 or 15 strands pulled out. You can go ahead and cut that off. Okay. Then you're going to take those 15 strands and you're going to fold them over, kind of roll them together a little bit, fold them over so it makes a little loop on the end like that you'll see right there. Okay, you're going to hold that loop in place then you're going to take the hook and you're going to slide the hook up through that loop so that it kind of grabs onto the hook like that and then you're going to push all of that up towards the eye and hold it in place like that so now you've got all of that bound up near the top and you're going to slide your other hook with the flash on up your leader like this find the place that you want to tie it in I usually tie it in about one hook length above. And then I'm gonna start wrapping back, snelling it in about seven or eight wraps, really tight, because that's what's gonna hold all of that flash in place. Pull it back through like you would do with any snell. Tighten it down. Okay. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I want to help secure all that flash in there. So I'm gonna take a little bit of Super glue, if I can get this to drain down. There we go. Just gonna put a drop of super glue on that knot to help tighten it up and harden it so that uh, this lure will have a little bit more durability. Okay, so then the next thing I'm gonna do is I really don't want as much flash boo as I have on there now, so I need to do some trimming. So I'll trim a little bit of the wayward strands that are sticking off the front. And then what I wanna do is sort of brush all of that crystal flash back, pull out any loose pieces. And then I'm gonna trim it to about halfway down the shank of the second hook. So I'll just pull this out. There we go. Let me pull that up for you. Got one more little wayward piece there. Great. Now that's ready to go. And you can see that it's got a nice little profile. It kind of looks like a little freshwater shrimp down there or something that they might key in on. It's got a lot of flash, but very subtle. And then I'll just tie a small surgeon's loop six to eight inches up in front so I can clip this into a dodger. Most of them already have a little clip there, so you don't need to worry about it. So there we go, got the surgeon's loop tight on the front. And in just a couple minutes, I've tied up a really effective and very brightly colored but subtle action 
on that kokanee lure right there. So that's just basically a crystal flash bug, I call it. All right, and number five on my list is going to be small spoons. Now there's a bunch of different spoons out on the market, but the main thing I wanna focus on here is on size and colors. You just wanna make sure that you get spoons that um, have that color and flash that kokanee respond to and have appropriately sized hooks. These uh, little weasel spoons from Pulse and Cascade Tackle are awesome. Uh, they come in a lot of really good kokanee colors and the, they do extremely well at catching these fish. They have a lot of action because of their small size. So I'll usually give them quite a bit of space behind uh, a, a lake troll like this one here. Um, so I'm gonna run a leader that's gonna be in that 24 to 30 inch and they will really wiggle around a lot and have a lot of action. But there are also spoons out there on the market that aren't made from metal like these ones. There are plastic spoons uh, like this one from Apex. Pro Troll makes another one called the Kokanee Killer. These also work really well. Um, and again, I'm gonna prefer to run these behind Lake Trolls just because they put out so much drag um, that they can really actually uh, degrade the action of your Kokanee Dodgers unless you give them a lot of space to run. All right, so that covers my top five Kokanee trolling lures. If you have any questions about that, just let me know in the comment section below. I will also put links uh, to all of the products that I featured here uh, so that you can uh, add these to your tackle box for kokanee fishing. Um, I'll also put links to the lures and, and tackle I use to build those little tiny crystal flash bugs that I really like to fish as well. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to hit like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. And hopefully you'll be able to get out on the water soon and chase some uh, kokanee. Take care, guys. Good fishing. See you later.